going back there anymore, even though I was there once. However, it, well, of course, there are some medical implications depending on how much enhancement is being done. I was in a relationship. Hmm. <laughs> Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. If this is your first time tuning in, my name is Agnes. And if this is not your first time tuning in, you're welcome. Thank you for coming back today again and again. So on today's video, I have someone very special <laughs> with me here to help me to discuss this topic that God has laid on my heart to actually bring to you guys and I'll allow him to introduce himself. Hi everybody, my name is Olukaya Day, but um, you can call me K because everybody calls me K. I'm a pastor here in Kuz Crusher, um, pastor of Word of Christ Church International. It's a church for foreign students. Yay. Okay, Pastor K, you're welcome to my channel. Thank you. And thank you so much for accepting my invitation. Uh, you're welcome. <laughs> oh <my laughs> kind of like, more like I invited myself. But no, okay. no, 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 no. You know, I had to actually be like, Pastor K, please come. Please come. Please come. But yeah, today you're here. So you guys just expect to be blessed by this. Like, make sure you watch to the end. Expect to be blessed and... It's going to actually be a blessing to you in Jesus name. Amen. Amen. So Pastor K, we're going to be discussing about um, identity crisis. Oh. Okay. And I would like you to uh, to define what identity crisis is. Oh, um, are we going to do this, you know, scripturally or are we going to do it logically? We are going to do it scripture scripturally okay. because this is a faith-based channel so <laughs> it has to be scripturally. Um, all right there is actually I would say it's one of my favorite scriptures in the Bible and that's Romans chapter 8 mm -hmm. verse 29. Um, 29 and 30 actually and I've got this question a lot from a lot of people they want to know what destiny is, what's my destiny, who am I, and all this stuff, what's the will of God for my life. Um, and in Romans chapter, and I'm sure that this will be put up during the whole editing stuff. Um, in Romans chapter 8, verse 29, it says that we have one destiny, and that is to be conformed to the image of Christ. God has predestined every single one of us to be in that image of Christ. Um, and if you look at the book of Ephesians chapter 2, uh, well, Ephesians chapter 1 and Ephesians chapter 2, it talks about who we are in Christ. And so there is no destiny outside of Christ. Mm -hmm. That is who we are. That is our destiny. That is our identity. Um, and so if I'm going to define all of that, simply put, your identity is Christ. Well, that's the key. <laughs> So you say you did not prepare. I didn't. Wow, that was good. That was so good. No. <laughs> so an identity crisis is an identity that is not in Christ. Exactly. That's exactly it. So if someone wants to be in Christ, if someone or maybe someone is lost and they, they genuinely don't know what it means to be in Christ, like what, what will you tell that person? What are you going to say? Well... Um, people find their identity in different things. Um, some people find it, um, you know, in a bottle or some people say at the bottom of a bottle. Some people find it in um, relationship, um, codependency. Some people find their identity um, in drugs. Some people find it in education. Some people find it in work. Um, we have created all these forms of escape um so that when we get asked that question who are you we can come up with a really good excuse mm -hmm. um i'm a workaholic or i am in a relationship or i am these or i am that um, but the truth is um nobody really none of us really get to that point of finding out who we are and that is because um we have been swayed to believe we've been made to believe that um, you're doing okay regardless of you know who you are where you are but I guess there is that call that hole that deep hole inside us that is yearning to be loved mm -hmm. yearning to be accepted yearning to be 
affirmed, right? Affirmation. And I guess for somebody to come to that place, they must, in a way, first get to the end of their rope. And when they realize that, okay, this is the end of my rope, um, at that point, um, they are willing to turn to Christ. And it's not supposed to be like that. In most cases, that's unfortunately how it is. Um, but for somebody who has got into that place, um, it's so easy. You know, the Bible says, call upon me, um, and then I will, I will respond. It says that if you seek me with all your heart, if you seek me diligently with all your heart, you will find me. God is not far away. It's not some cosmic being in the ether somewhere that only the selected few are ever going to get to. No, it is so close. Even the Bible says it's closer to us even than our own soul. And so a simple prayer like, Lord, I'm at the end of my rope. I need help. Something as easy as that and, and God will show up. Okay. So, yeah, thank you for that. Thank you for that answer. So now let's talk about people who actually identify themselves as maybe a particular, let's say, for instance, some people identify themselves as part of LGBT, is that what it's called? Yeah, LGBT. Yeah, LGBT community. Okay, and then all of that, and some people are even identifying themselves as different pronouns these days. What do you have to say about that? Well, um, well, that's a tough one. I, I, I always tell my friends, that if somebody doesn't matter who invites me um, to the wedding uh, no matter what gender is getting married I will go there because really? yeah really yeah like if it's a male male female female yeah it doesn't matter what gender is getting married I'll go there I'll eat and have fun because we're called to love um, However, if somebody calls me to come and marry, you know, the same gender, for example, I will not do it because I don't believe in it. Um, mm -hmm. And so there is that line. Um, and I think the reason why this topic is something that, you know, a lot of people shy away from is because it raises a lot of alarm. And people say, oh, you're judging and you're this and you're that. But we supposed to know that there are standards. Um, the book of Romans chapter one really hit home on this. And I encourage anybody who's reading this to go read Romans chapter one. It really, really hits home. Um, and so for someone to identify as, and you know, we're just taking it to the, let's, let's bring it back a little bit. Yes, identifying as maybe gay or, you know, homosexual or transgender and all of this stuff. We can even bring it closer. And I said this earlier, even before you get there, some people can identify themselves as workaholics. Um, and it goes back to the foundation. If you don't know who you are in Christ, then it's easy to be swayed to be called anything. Um, growing up, and another example is this, growing up, our parents would call us all kinds of names in anger. Well, it's foolish, stupid, you know, and there are some really horrible Yoruba words. Um, and as we grow up, this starts to shape who we are. We see ourselves, the way the people around us see us, the way they portray us, even when they are joking, even when they are saying these things, these words, they resonate, they stay, they stick, mm -hmm. and they become how we see ourselves eventually. Um, so I, I'm saying basically that if somebody, it doesn't matter, no matter the red flag, call it whatever you want. Um, and I know that there are, you know, transgenders who believe that they are in Christ and they love God. Um, and it's their faith. They will eventually, you know, sit down one day um, and they will be, and I've seen Christians also who are wonderful Christians, but you know, they, they have troubles and issues and stuff. Um, so just cause one is a Christian doesn't necessarily mean that they know their identity. There are many Christians who are Christians in name. Knowing one's identity has to do it really digging deep into the Word of God, finding out for yourself. 
And if you see it in the word that this is what Christ, this is what God says I am, then it's easy to identify with that. If not, you're going to identify with what the world says you are. Okay, so Pastor K, now I have I have some questions. Okay. Like if if you're going first of all, the first question is, do you do you think or according to what you said, mm-hmm. do you feel like it's okay to attend a wedding yeah. where the both people are of the same gender? I have no problem with it really. Why? <laughs> Why? <laughs> Why? Um well, okay, imagine if um, your friend who um, is paralyzed, mm-hmm. right, um, mm-hmm. invites you to a wedding. He has a disability. doesn't mean that he's, you know, he's not human. And that disability doesn't change anything. You go there, you still love on these people. I mean, I know, okay, so I'm not calling, you know, essentially a disability probably is. <laughs> <laughs> because, um, <laughs> because that, like, <laughs> okay. um, yes, but at the end of the day, um, maybe my gesture of love can help these people see Christ in me um, and can open a way for them to walk in the light of who they are in Christ. I'm not as homosexuals, but as children of God. We know that God created them male and female. We know that God created, you know, Eve, not Steve, so, <laughs> anyway. So, let it be clear that it is male and female and not supposed to be male and male or female and female. Because I personally, I would have sent you that. <laughs> no, you would not see me there. You would, you would. That's how I was like, really? Um, I mean, it's food, isn't it? No, it's beyond food. It's beyond food. It's beyond it. So yeah, no male and male. See, if if you've lost your identity, a lot of people who actually identify as um gay, homosexuals, and all of that, we don't know how it started, right? We don't yeah. know what led to that, and the only thing we can actually do is to pray for them that they actually come to the knowledge of Christ, yeah. and. If God helps them, they shouldn't even get to that point where they are getting married in the first place. Mm-hmm. They should be able to retrace and find their steps back. Yeah, well, when you think about it, again, it goes back to acceptance. Mm-hmm. Um, some people may have been hurt by this gender. Some people, um, you know, maybe growing up, they identified with a particular gender. And nobody was there to teach them. And they, you know, they, we have... The world that we live in, the system of man today, um, and this is a bonus, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, I believe this is the devil at work, and what the devil is really doing is destroying family, mm-hmm. and and that is the that is the main thing behind all of these movements, um, because you know family is the unit, um, is the unit is the, the the starting point of any community. And say, for instance, you know, the people will talk about artificial inseminations and all those different ways of making baby, Mm -hmm. but you know that it requires a male and a female, regardless of what technology that you use. Mm -hmm. And the basics of this thing is wired deep into the even nature. Everything in nature is male and female, right? Mm -hmm. And so the people will go against this, you know, that something is wrong and you know that the devil is at work and what the devil is trying to really do is destroy families because imagine if the entire world were to you know pair up male and male female and female there wouldn't be babies anymore <laughs> um and the you know basically will destroy the population of the world um and so it goes back to acceptance a lot of people there could have been a lot of things that caused them to make this decision in the path of their life um but everybody really is just searching for love and until they know the love of god really know the love of god they'll find love in other things in other places Mm -hmm. wow so now let's let's talk about a christian who is still struggling with his or her identity like knowing who they are in christ you said something that a lot of people are Christians, but they still have no identity. They don't know who they really are. Mm. And I, I, I personally feel like getting to know who you are 
in Christ does not just is not a standpoint that you just stop at, but it continues. Yeah. So, like if you were to talk to a Christian that is trying to find his own his or herself and trying to just know, like who am I? Where am I? Like what am I here for? What am I? Like why am I here? Why am I a human being? Mm. What are you going to tell? Be what are you going to tell the person? Um, well, it starts with a simple prayer, you mm. know, asking God, inviting the Holy Spirit in. Um, and then number two will be to take time to meditate and read the Word of God. There's no such thing as a lazy Christian. Um, if we do not take the time to study, because the Bible is not just some old historical book that was written by some philosophers. Um, it is a spiritual book that is written for our benefits today so that we can find who Christ is. We can understand the work of the cross mm -hmm. and why we have this inheritance today. And so personally in my life, um, in a, it's a short story, very short, um, I, when I first came to Russia, I couldn't lift my head up to look at people in the eyes. I couldn't do it. I couldn't smile the way I can smile now because in those days um, I had a very, very horrible low self-esteem um, and I thought I was uglier than anything you could ever see. I was, I used to see myself as extremely ugly. Thank God for the people in my life now they've told me otherwise. <laughs> really. um, and um, But the reason that was and the reason I identified that way was because I'd not taken the time to find out who I am in the Bible, mm -hmm. meditating on the Word of God. And the more um, I spent time in the Word, um, the more I... Um, ah, number three, this leads me to number three, is a community of believers. It's probably the most important. People do not understand how powerful it is when you're in a community of people who are God-fearing, who love God, want to serve God, it's the best. Because, you know, iron sharpens iron. Mm -hmm. And you can start to see, it's like you are walking in light and anything dark in you, you know, basically cannot exist in that atmosphere. It comes to light. Right. And then you can deal with it. And it's the same thing with me. When I started walking in the midst of all these people, my low self-esteem could not stay. My fear, and I had a lot of fear, my whatever it was, and it took a while. It wasn't that I found Jesus today and, the you next know, day. <laughs> um, until tomorrow I'm still struggling with some things. Um, but it doesn't mean that I will now go back you know, I would just wake up one morning and then maybe something happened, I'm depressed, and then I'll go get a bottle of gin and say, oh, <laughs> I'm not going back there anymore, even though I was there once. And the reason is that I know now that no matter what happens to me, God works all things together for my good. Amen. Amen. We're moving on. Okay. And now I'm going to ask you about what do you think about body enhancements? <laughs> Um, in what way? Like, in a general sense, okay, from a, femi from a feminine perstective, <laughs> <laughs> thank you, stop laughing, <laughs> from a feminine perspective. Ah, <laughs> uh, okay, <clears throat> this is going to sound weird, mm -hmm. I don't have anything against body enhancement. Okay. I think everybody have, um, everybody's got a right to you know, do whatever they want to do to make them feel however they want to feel, good, whatever. Um, however, it well, of course, there are some medical implications depending on how much enhancement is being done. Not even how much. So far as you're doing an enhancement, <laughs> <laughs> there is a medical stuff. Okay, continue, continue. I mean, yes, I saw a video recently of how some people have augmented themselves to have horns, and this is real. Yes, and you know, um, and generally speaking, do you think tattoo falls in that category? <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to get off this one. Okay, okay, okay. 
to be honest, I don't have any problems with tattoos. Okay. I don't have any problems with piercings. Although I won't get one. <laughs> <laughs> but I don't have any problem with it. Or I don't I don't really see it as a big deal. Um but if what if I were to answer the question I threw at you okay. about body enhancements, maybe let's talk about BBLs and all of those other things. Especially because most of the times it's women who actually have Mm. I'm not saying men don't, but yeah. have those problems with like insecurities and all of that. So they want to get attention and then that causes them to do that. But for me, the first question I would ask is, why do you want to get it done? Mm. Let's know the purpose. Okay, some people may say it's to feel more confident, mm. it's to feel better about themselves. But if you were the only one in the world, would you go through that pain? Come on to look a certain kind of way mm. so i don't i won't recommend it to someone and i don't know if i would judge someone <laughs> i don't know i don't know honestly but yeah that's that's what i so think. Okay, tell me what do you think about people who are codependent like in their relationships like they've lost themselves and they are just ah uh, well relationship is an entirely whole new ball game on its own mm -hmm. um but yeah codependency is probably one of the biggest um i would say symptom of insecurity Please, can you define codependence <sighs> okay how do i define codependency um layman's term it's when you are Okay, it's when you bring 50% into a relationship and you expect the person to bring 50%, which doesn't make her whole. Or you um, expect and demand something that you yourself are not willing to give. And you also, um, you know, create clouds in, or uh, you say castles in the clouds. And... Um, I don't know, live like your life depends on that relationship, which, I mean, different, I, I, it's all, everything, I don't know how to put it all into just one sentence, mm -hmm. but, um, and I think that really, really has to do with not knowing where you are. Um, I was in a relationship, hmm. <laughs> and I hope the person doesn't see this video. Um, <laughs> years ago this is about six or seven years ago mm -hmm. um and i was still dealing with a lot of the insecurities um then and um you know i would message this person and i would you know call and if they didn't reply i would feel like my world was crumbling and mm -hmm. um and if you know it wasn't because in those days i felt even in the relationship like i didn't deserve the person um like the person was just managing me <laughs> and um of course the relationship eventually ended um and and it didn't, my world didn't end even though the relationship ended um so i needed to and i've been in another relationship since then but that I needed to understand who I was. Again, it goes back again to identity. It goes back to knowing who you are in Christ. Um, one of the things that I know that I spent a lot of time doing was affirming myself, knowing who I am mm -hmm. in Christ. And that affirmation carried through to everything that I did. Um, there was a time in my life that I couldn't say no. I couldn't say no. And some people might think, Oh, but that's, you know, it was awful. It was bad. I couldn't say no, no matter what. Even if I was already choked up to mm -hmm. any level and you say do this, it's yes. Because I was afraid to hurt people. I was afraid that um, somebody might hate me. If or see I you as a bad person. See me as a bad person. I was afraid. I didn't want anybody to not like me. <clears throat> right. And, and so all of these things have had to work through in my life and all of if you carry um <laughs> your own baggage and into a relationship and that person brings his own and you're not well affirmed you're not you know firmly footed in your foundation in christ and knowing who you are mm -hmm. in christ 
um, definitely that relationship is going to have codependency a lot because you guys will be drawing from each other. You'll be finding fulfillment in that person and there's no fulfillment anywhere else except in Christ. Oh God. Amen. True. Yeah. True. I support you. <laughs> yeah. I support that. That's so, so, like, deep. Uh, maybe I should ask you one question. <laughs> okay, okay. So, Patake wants to ask me one question. Yes, I have a question for Before you. Before we end this video. Yes. So, okay. And I'm pretty sure you guys are going to love me for this question because I'm about to give you guys a very good one. Okay, okay. Um, <laughs> how would you deal mm -hmm. with a guy that you clearly like? Clearly. Um, <laughs> You know, it fits all the bills, mm -hmm. um, but you can tell that his identity is not yet right. What would you do? He fits all the bills yes. and his identity is not yet right. Right. That's the only part that seemed like it's a bit off. <laughs> no, it's a no. <laughs> <laughs> it's a no because like for my destiny, I know where I'm headed and I know what I'm going to do. So at least I have an idea. Mm. Let me let me not say I know everything, but but then I can't be with someone who is struggling with his identity because mm -hmm. if he struggles with his identity, then he's probably having insecurity problems and low self esteem. So he, if I am to be going higher, which of course I will be going higher in life, in my excelling in my career and all of that, then he's feeling somehow left behind. It would be like something else so it, it cannot happen you know well guys you heard it i tried that's okay, <laughs> that's okay. Guys, okay. thank you so much for watching this video <laughs> and i hope you enjoyed it yes thank you pastor k for coming here i really appreciate you thank and god you. bless you amen. amen thank you bye bye <laughs>